Good morning and welcome to My Church NZ. If you've got a Bible this morning, we'd delight to turn to Jeremiah 29, verse 4, beginning at verse 4. The God of Israel says to those I carried into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon, Build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters, find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they may too have sons and daughters, increase in number, and do not decrease. Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into. Pray for the Lord, because if it prospers, you will prosper also. The God of Israel says, Do not let these false prophets, false apostles and false elders, false ministers and diviners amongst you deceive you. And do not listen to the dreams and their outcomes to encourage you into false and wicked ways, believing a lie. They are prophesying lies in my name, and I have not sent them, declares the Lord. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, and plans to give you a hope and a future. You know, we're living in an age where it's absolutely imperative that these last days are going to be so difficult for many will be unable to divide, to divide truth from error. I put a post up on Facebook this week and asked a certain question. What defines a man to be an apostle? And the answers are quite astounding. Unbiblical, just emotions of men and thoughts and thinking of this world, which compelled me to minister this word this morning. Leading many to absolute confusion and eventually agreeing with the thoughts of this world. Thoughts that are outside of God's thoughts. Unless we know this book inside out, it's no longer optional to hear the voices of men. Or is enough to remember and know a verse any longer. It has to be inscribed and indelibly printed in the hearts and souls of men and women so no man can rip it from you. It continually amazes me that many churches, many people sitting in the pews do not even know a verse of scripture. They don't even know a Bible story now. They don't even know the songs of praise or a hymnal any longer. So all they're doing is sitting and lis listening to love messages, itching nonsense, coupled with irreverent rock bands and music in the church. Folks, this is going to be absolutely imperative as the days are creeping forward that we know the word of God. Or else you will be deceived and taken away into a life of destruction and disappointment outside of God. In this story, the people of Israel had been brought into a place of incredible blessing. New Zealand was taken into a place of incredible blessing for years. These people were told and warned by the prophets not to take the things of God lightly, to live in a delusion expecting that God will still continue to bless them, irrespective of their sin and the way that they were living, playing the fool and taking God lightly, taking the word of God out of parliament and taking it out of schools and flippantly now declaring that there is no God. In fact, if there is, there's many other ways to God. And as a result, that period of peace and prosperity came to an end as we similarly, similarly see what's happening in New Zealand today with the cost of living and the cost of retail spending evaporating and much hardship everywhere across the country. A land that we once enjoyed and thought would continue forever is coming to an end. You know, there's times and seasons in our life where circumstances can change at the stroke of a pen. There could be a newspaper heading tomorrow morning that the world is on fire and in nuclear war. And we all know that. We're all conscious of this. There could be a statement coming out, the money systems in the world have collapsed and Wall Street is a sudden rush and it's collapsed. Retirement funds that you once enjoyed and trusted have gone in a flash of bank bankruptcy. And massive redundancies at the strike of a new government in New Zealand 
are already being propagated across this land can change in a flash of time and many in New Zealand are experiencing that, that exactly right now. The Bible declares and says very clearly in one hour everything will change. Change in a moment of time. It can happen to a listener, you listening to online in one hour everything could change in a moment of time. A phone call, one phone call, a car accident, a health report, a job loss, a nuclear war possibility. The world has changed. Your world has changed. And many of you know this because you've been there in the past. The wife that I thought I had is gone. The job that I thought was for life is gone. Everything that I put my trust in and built is gone. Everything that I thought that would have given me security is gone. Everything that you trust in is gone. Everything that you built is gone. Everything that you leaned on and put your faith in is gone. And just when all this is happening, there will be voices running around in your head, confusing you, some from God and many from the devil, and Satan himself leaving you in a tailspin of not knowing what to believe any longer. And what shall I do? And who shall I listen to? Who shall I turn to? Where shall I go? Sending your head into a spinning confusion from Satan himself. And in the last days, when everything begins to collapse, which it will and is, Many false prophets shall arise. Many false apostles will arise. Many self-appointed people will arise and deceive many and tell lies with empty promises. That's a bright, that's a bright future ahead. Delivering woke nonsense with no solid grounding from the word of God. So when the winds of change come, all your belief system that you have attended and been listening to at church every week from these prophets uh, has blown away. All because you are not deeply grounded in the word of God, the everlasting truth of the gospel. And today we have a multitude of people that have no clue how to hear the voice of God any longer. So they've left themselves wide open to hearing the voices of men, the voices of nonsense, the voices of wrong doctrine, the voices of man's self-appointed thoughts and interpretation on the word of God, the voices of love messages endlessly and with no instruction, no revelation. And so they are blown over with no foundation of truth except de deception and lies. And when you, shake, sh when you shake the tin, there's nothing left in the tin that holds or binds you to the word of God. And the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. And in other words, we know each other. We have a bond. We have a relationship. And they follow me. And I give them eternal life. They will never perish. And no man shall pluck them out of my hand. And no self-appointed prophet. No self-appointed apostle. That gets, <coughs> gets up deludes the people of God. Declaring this and that. And God appointed me. God told me about this. About you. No prophet. No false prophet. No one can take away the fear of your own heart. No thoughts of man, because you will know that you are such a place of security. You will know without a shadow of doubt that you are solidly, firmly planted in the rock of salvation in his hand, because you will know the word of God. And it's, it is in these most difficult times of life that many of you experience. When we can see no light, we can see no answer, we can only see difficulty in a blank wall. We suddenly see the hand of God beyond that which of which we've never seen before open up the doors. And many of you have experienced this, the great hand of God. And when the children of Israel were facing the impossible and passed through the Red Sea with an advancing army and blocked in with a river and nowhere to go, they saw the mighty hand of God. And folks, some of you may be facing what may look like an impossible passage today and no way out, and see no way out. Throughout all this, with all these voices screaming in the churches, claiming to speak for God, there arises a question, how do I really know the voice of God, and that God is speaking to me, and I have his word that's guilt-edged. It's when everything begins to shake. It's when everything begins to vibrate. We need to know it is not the voice of a man. It's not the voice of our own heart. It's not the voice of a false prophet or apostle. 
We need to know it's not the voice of some angel sitting in the front pews of a church telling more lies and love stories leading us further down a road of destruction. So how do I know, and this is the question, the voice of God. God will never promise you peace when you're embracing the same values of the crooked and perverse world. In verse 13, the sovereign Lord says this, the false prophets keep telling them, you will not see the sword or suffer famine. Indeed, I'll give you a lasting peace in this place. I'll give you what you want to hear. I'll give you a nice coffee at the end of the church service. But don't ask me to repent. All empty re promises from fake pro prophets and fake apostles pleading and massaging the people in the house of God. And the place was a land of new judgment and Jer Jeremiah knew it. And if they weren't going to make it, they weren't going to make it and everything that was around them that was embracing these sound values in society that were coming under the judgment of God, there will be voices talking tripe. You will have prosperity. You will be safe. You will have peace. You will have massive harvest times. You'll have great revivals in the church. There will be thousands of people coming to the local church. For when they say this, peace and safety, then there's sudden destruction coming upon them as a travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. This is the word of the Lord, not my words. And Jeremiah saw something coming fast. He saw an army advancing. He saw the temple being smashed. He saw it being destroyed and obliterated. He saw the destruction and the calamity. And he knew that Satan was echoing these voices to these false prophets and apostles in the church. He saw the people's value systems which were no different to the world, which was perishing society outside the word of God, just like New Zealand is perishing spiritually, perishing economically and perishing morally. And in effect, there was no difference that you could see between the, between the church and the, and the world. And amongst all of this, there were voices saying, everything's going to be sweet, everything's going to be okay. Just like the people in New Zealand. A miracle has happened. We've got a new government we're now heading in the right direction. Just give us three years and the books will be balanced, the interest rates will come down and law and order will be restored. Sadly, the church of today is loaded with these false prophets, loaded with false apostles, screaming out prophetic words like fortune tellers, just like the prophet saying that you'll have peace in this place, living in a perishing worldly value system. And the question is this, how does any church that embraces the same worldly value system of the world escape this judgment? For the voice of God will expose sin. The voice of God will demand reverence. The voice of God will demand his word. And sin in this aspect is anything that stands in disobedience against the word of God and the holy God. Jeremiah, they, the false prophets kept saying to those who despise me, the Lord says you'll have peace. And to all who follow the stubbornness and the imaginations of their hearts, say there will be no harm come to you. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord? Just if they'd listened to the word of the Lord and had truly repented and turned away, the situation could have been drastically different. That no, they embrace the things of this world, the value system of this world. And who has listened and heard this word? The anger of the Lord will not turn back and he will be fully accomplish the purposes of his heart in days to come. And you'll understand it clearly. We need to be a people that confess that we will trust in God to give us the power to turn away from sin, folks. What I see in this book and what has been revealed to me, I'm going to obey this word no matter what by his strength and his power. I'm going to walk in union with God and I'm going to walk and have a way of thinking in my life that will transform me to, me to be a great testimony for God. I'll come to God with every sin and battle that I have in front of me. I'll come to God with my struggles. I'll come to God with my afflictions. I'll come to God with my finances. I'll come to God who will strengthen me. Folks, I'm here to say to you, to live as a Christian, to live a supernatural life outside the natural values of this world. 
It's a life to live and complete different value system, to live a totally different realm of triumph and victory is to be brought into the kingdom of, of light that has no end. We leave this earthly perishing planet and we embrace the things in the heart of God, a whole new supernatural stepping out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. What will you do when it all comes to an end believing this nonsense? Jeremiah says. Your sins and lack of repentance have deprived you. Among my people are the wicked prophets and elders and apostles and men wandering around with earthly values in cloth who lie in wait like men who snare birds. How their houses are full of deceit. They have become rich and powerful ministers of the prosperity gospel and have grown fat and slick with personal planes and massive mansions. They do not promote the case of the fatherless. They do not defend the poor. Should I not punish them for this, says the Lord? A horrible and shocking thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy lies, and my people pressure, perish. And the pre priests rule by their own authority. And my people love it this way. They love the love message. They love it Sunday after se Sunday, gobbling, gobbling it all up. But what will you do in the end? But what will you do in the end? This is exactly what's happening today in the church with the rise of these false prophets, creating a sense of well-being, caught between an elusive future and a vanishing past. Satan comes and promises the people a future that's not going to simply happen, folks. And when it doesn't happen, he promises a past that's not coming back to. And many of you are looking into the past, hoping that the good times are coming back and going to roll again. And if there's one and only one objective of Satan, and that is to update you with the false promises, until eventually you come to the end of the road and the conclusion God cannot be trusted any longer to ensure you are in a total place of not knowing God any longer. You will have no certainty. You'll have no direction. You'll always be shifting scenes from one church to the next, splitting the church and making another church. And your lack of trust in your heart, so eventually you'll ca cast off your confidence in God. You'll cast off your confidence in the Saviour in the hour of your greatest need. And folks, he is a liar. And so are the people and the apostles and the prophets wandering around talking this love and nonsense message, talking this prosperity message talking a lulled message without any repentance and urgency that there's a, going to be the sheep and the goats separated into eternal damnation or a life of eternity. And this is what we're seeing from the false prophets and false, false apostles. So finally when the calamity comes and nothing of what they promise will happen and doesn't, and finally the question is this to you, who can you trust? Do not throw away your confidence, Jeremiah says. For just in a little while, he who is coming will come quickly. But my righteous ones will live by faith and take no pleasure in the ones who shrink back and listen to this nonsense. But they will listen to my word. But we do not belong to those that shrink back who are being destroyed, but to those that have faith and know the word of God and have his word indelibly printed in our hearts and our minds will be saved. And nothing comes our way, but God has not allowed it to come into your life for a specific reason. You're not in the hands of the devil and you never will be, and you're never going to be. You're in the hands of the almighty God and mainly just to learn to trust God. It's time to live as a person that has confidence and trust. Live a life that brings honour to the glory of God. For he has taken you out of the miry clay and put your feet upon a solid rock. For he has put a new song in your hearts where many shall see your quietness and confidence in God and be fearful and put their trust in God also because of your testimony. We need a people that says that even the mountains be shaken out of this place, 
Even if the waters of Snell's Beach overflow the riverbanks, I will not be afraid. I will put my trust and my confidence in the living God, and I shall not be shifted. And God will not ever fail me, nor shall he ever forsake me. And God will be my testimony in the midst of them that hate me, for he has prepared a table for me, even the many that are jeering and sneering and disbelieving in you. And I'll put my hope in these things, in God. Just a little time, just over the hill, where our songs and worship and praise will never die. And so shall we be ever be caught up in the air to meet the Lord, where we will never ever thirst or hunger. We will never run out of cash. There will be no elevated electricity bills and fuel costs and no hardship. There will be no more tears just around the corner where the peace of God endures forever and ever with no end. Folks, do not cast away your confidence in this last hour. And do not listen to the false prophets and the false apostles elevating themselves above the word of God. But live a life that gives honour and praise to our God and hear the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, let us be a people that have your word so indelibly printed in our hearts that no other voice has any way of entrance into our mind or into our soul or our spirit. Let us be so grounded in your word and not that, what, that of the voices of men competing for the life's destruction, that we may know the truth of the word of God, which stands forever and ever and ever. Amen.